I've had some crazy unexplainable things that happened to me in my life so I had to make this video. And welcome back to reading your real paranormal slash unexplainable stories where I ask you guys, my fans, if there's any crazy ghost stories, any spiritual synchronicities, things that are just unexplainable that you guys wanted to share. I have a whole series on this. I think this is like part eight or nine so go check the cards out for the whole playlist. If you like this series, remember hitting the like button and subscribing, leaving a comment down of your unexplainable stories all helps to hit the algorithm. YouTube algorithm have been changing hard, but guess what? I am here to stay and share you guys some crazy stories. And I have a new podcast show called The Green Tea with my co-host, Emma. We dive into celestial and motivational stories and amazing guests from Hollywood producers to millionaire moguls. It's my new baby, so please go and subscribe and support. And I promise you guys, there's gonna be some interesting stories there as well. So this encounter happened back in December, which was not that long ago. And again, I was going through something really bad in my head. I think I told you guys, but I've dealt with, you know, some heavy anxiety and insomnia. But this particular day, it was 8.30 p.m. at night. It was around there. And I remember that day, you know, I've been seeing some synchronicity numbers such as like 1111, 444, 333. I've been seeing that a lot. And it was my friend that I've been talking to who's also been seeing so much synchronicities. And whenever we would see these numbers on a clock, we would like screenshot it and send to each other. So that, that was a thing we did a little bit back then. So around 8.30 p.m. at night, I picked up my phone that was on charge in my room. So obviously the first thing you do is touch the screen, it comes alive and I swipe up, right? And I kid you not, guys, when I touch my screen like this, it said 4.44. And I was like, wait a minute, it's dark outside, it's night, um, it's not 4.44. And literally it was about for one second, about one or two seconds, and it glitched back to like 8.29, 8.30 p.m. Yeah, phones can glitch, but my phone has never glitched like that before where my time glitches. And what are the odds? What are the odds that the time that was glitching happened to be 4.44? Like I was like, what? What is this sign? What? What is this trying to tell me? Like what? What? Another crazy story that happened to me recently that I have to share with you guys, and I've been sharing with all my friends because this one is a feel-good one. Very recently, only a couple weeks ago, it was snowing, and I remember I just dreading to go out. I was also in my head a lot about like you know making money and things like that, and there was a collaboration that I was supposed to do with a restaurant, and they weren't paying me, and I was like, damn, I regret it. Also, going to the city for me takes a long time and a lot of money, so. Again, I was very dreading to go out, but I promised my friend that I was going to be there and I'm the type of person who do not wanna go back on my promises just because I'm not feeling it. I just don't like those kind of people and I don't wanna be that person. So on the long train to the city, I remember asking the universe for certain signs. There's a book called Sacred Signs and this book taught me a lot about how to ask signs from the universe in times when you need help. So basically you ask the universe for a sign that means a lot to you and you could do like a yes and no question. For example, while I was on the train, I asked the universe, please send me a sign of a turtle if it means that I was meant to be patient whatever that I was going through personally in my head I, I'm not gonna share that part if this situation was meant for me to still stick on and persevere and know that everything is going to be okay please send me a sign of a turtle let me physically see a turtle but I do not ask for in the sign of a TikTok or Instagram algorithm. So I make sure to let the universe know to please bring it in a way where I definitely know I'm not gonna be confused. I also ask for another sign, which is a sign of a rabbit if it was meant that I need to drop whatever my situation was, that I'm wasting my time, that I just need to drop everything and leave. So I just kind of sent that to the universe. You forget about it. You can give a little bit of timing, like please come in 24 hours or one week. So I go and meet my friend. I am at this event. It was fun. I had a great time with my friend. We're eating delicious food and now it was over and she actually brought a car. I can just walk to the train. So technically we're just going to go home. But as we were talking and she was like, oh, get in the car. Maybe she was going to drop me off to the train station. I wasn't really supposed to get into her car, but it just happened. So I opened the passenger door and she had these chips so for me to sit in the passenger seat I lifted the chips and I gave it to her and she said oh I bought this for you at first I was like wait you brought me chips like that was so random like I'm very thankful but it was like random I was like oh okay you brought me some chips cool as I was going back home on the long train ride I opened the chips because I'm feeling a little hungry and I was eating it I was like oh this actually tastes pretty good and I looked at the chips and guess what it said it was the Korean turtle chips I was like, no way. 
no way holy shit i'm like what are the odds that i got into her car which i wasn't supposed to and she didn't bring the chips to the event i had to go to the car to see the sign and i almost canceled the dinner because i really didn't want to go out but i did go and I asked for the sign and turtle chips fell on my lap. So to me, that was a sign of be patient, to persevere, to keep going in the questions that I personally asked to the universe. And my last crazy story before I get to my fans paranormal story is that I have a psychic story. So there is a specific psychic that I go to in New York City and she is one of the craziest psychics that we've personally been to. This account reached out to me, this huge account, VT actually, on TikTok and they Said, can we repost one of your videos and i said sure what video and they wanted to repost my psychic story video that i did which is this video and i was like that's random they only usually post like 15 20 30 seconds short form videos like funny videos regardless i contacted the psychic and i said hey they want to repost this video are you okay with it and that's how i got to talk to her again and like we had a whole facetime call she told me there was a message for me from the spirits and she did her tarot cards and her psychic reading and usually during these sessions i tell her zero on purpose and she said what is this business that you started with your friends and i was like oh the podcast was the only business that I actually started with my friend. She even happened to match the person that I was doing the podcast with, which was Goosebump Freaky. And the message was that we were kind of delaying it and that we were going to miss the golden timing. So you guys had to like not delay it, which was true. Like we were actually delaying it a lot longer than we were supposed to upload and get it started. So she says that don't be afraid. Everything's going to be okay. If you guys miss the golden timing, you know, it's going to get harder. That made me believe that, hmm, so maybe there is free will but there is also a golden timing there is also like a portal of timing when you're supposed to do things for the energy to best benefit you what do you guys think this is a story by kath i grew up in the neighborhood's haunted house we only had two permanent ghosts in the house the rest seems to be transient for example one christmas around 2014 we'd see a bunch of muddy children footprints around the house that would seemingly appear out of nowhere every time it rained but after a few months we didn't experience it anymore a distant relative of ours refused to go to our house because she said that we had an open portal in our house that was letting all these different entities in we don't know where that portal is from but my mom said that when she was younger a neighborhood grandma told her that the land where our house stood used to be called Agi Anasa Magdi Ingonato sorry <laughs> rough translating to where beings not like us pass basically that name was coined because after sunset there used to be sightings of lined up brilliant lights that looked like they were marching through our place they said there were ingactos passing by to go to the century old tree that used to grow behind our land anyways fast forward to a few years back my mom ran into a friend in the market and her friend asked her if we had a party a few days back my mom said we didn't then her friend proceeded to tell her that a few weeks before she had passed by her house around 3 4 a.m and she said that her house looked really bright she said that it was shining as if every corner of the property has been bathed in gold and lights also people dressed in very beautiful vintage clothes with very fancy cars were going inside her house so she thought we were having a high class party or something obviously that was not the case because it was the crack of dawn Ooh, so i totally believe that on our earth there are different types of portals and energy i guess leaks that can happen just like the bermuda triangle or the alaskan triangle the alaskan bermuda triangle i heard that there was a mountain in california where the strange things happen and people have sworn to see things disappear people disappearing time loops so i do believe that there are certain energy points and portals where things are made easier for these entities to pass and maybe we can't see them with our eyes and just like the psychic stories that i told you guys even with timing when you're supposed to do things in life there is certain time portals or when energies are best served in your purpose kind of like astrology i guess when the stars align honestly that's a cool house to live in like i would love to live in a house with a portal and see crazy stuff but i'm like why didn't your mom's friend and go and check and see if 
you guys were really having a party. Like if that's my friend's house, I would walk in and be like, yo, what's going on? You didn't invite me to the party? Sugar says, there's probably something called energy vision. Similar thing happened to my grandfather when he was a kid. He and his friend were riding bikes near a forest in a small village in a Soviet Union at the time. Suddenly they heard like dark barking noises come from the forest. So they left their bikes and decided to go to the forest to check what's going on. When they came close to the sound, they hid behind a tree and saw a soldier in World War II uniform and a dog with him. The man was standing next to the dog and looking around. My grandpa and his friends were so curious that they decided to come out of the tree and sit next to the soldier. The soldier didn't even notice them and continued looking around while saying something to the dog. Then what my grandpa think is insane. The soldier ran in their direction with their dog, like looking forward but not noticing them. Then he literally ran through them with the dog disappeared into the thin air. My grandpa thought that he was going crazy, seeing things until he saw how shaken his friend was by this too. Till this day, they still call each other and talk about this sometimes. You guys, I did a video with my friend Gina. If you guys remember a couple years back, she told me of what this might be. She believes that there is something called like a loop, an energy loop, a time loop. Basically, it's like a movie being played over and over again. Because apparently time is not linear, time is like a loop and things are happening simultaneously like past, present, and future. But basically things that happened in the past, it's like a movie somebody playing over and over and we just can't see it with our eyes. Some, but sometimes when you're like a kid or when you have those powers or when you're in the right frequency, just like a radio station and you can kind of tune back into the past and see it being replayed like a movie. So does this mean that this man, the World War II uniform man is technically living right now? Does this guy know that he is alive and not like, what? My hairdresser from Korea, he also told me that when he was in the army in Korea, all men have to serve in the army. And he says that he saw like an injured soldier with like no legs, like just passing by like in his station. And people, a lot of people in the army have seen this, like recent army, not talking about like back in the World War II days. So it's like recent soldiers, if you're really tired or it's 3, 4 a.m. at night, some energy loops at times, you're able to tap into this and see the past. Amanda says, I had talked about my past life with my mom and my aunt and uncles and cousins. Apparently in my previous life, I was a mother and my son had a relationship with the neighbor's daughter. And for some reason, I didn't approve their relationship. That has caused some family disputes. And apparently one day I had found my son passed away from self poisoning. Eventually I had died from a car accident. I had told my mom that I was laying in a pool of my own blood in the middle of the road. I had told all of this when I was about three years old. Also, I had started talking about my real mama whenever I would get in trouble for something and my mom yelled at me or told me off. I used to say things like, my real mama would never talk to me this way and stuff. So one day my mama got really annoyed and told me that if you want your real mom, why don't you go back to her? Which I had said in anger, there's no point of me going there now cause everyone is dead three-year-old talking about these kind of crazy stuff unless you've seen some crazy movies which parents should not be exposing kids to horror movies like that's some crazy stuff i've done a past life hypnosis recently you guys probably have seen that video and i've seen my past life and i've seen the vision of this like house that i've seen since i was a kid in this body as grace and i'm like where did this house come from where did this vision come from because it was a european house and i can remember exactly the checkered boards and everything and during this past life, I was like, oh my God, it was the same vision of the house in that hypnosis. So I am now a firm believer that it is totally possible that past life do exist. Shanti says, I don't know if this is paranormal or spiritual or if life hates my guts. For the record, I thought it was a coincidence, but I can't understand how and why it happens. Whenever I have electronics, it doesn't matter what kind or the size, it either stops working or doing something weird out of nowhere. I started noticing when I was younger, but didn't think of it much until now, but it only happens on my electronics or if I'm around. If one of my electronics stop working or does something weird, that means something's coming and it's usually bad. I just shake it off because technology is not 100%. There will be errors. Errors. Last year, my home security camera was acting weird. I first thought it might be the wiring or cameras. I always think logical because it's hard for me to believe it might be a spiritual reason behind it. A couple days later, my grandma passed away. Somebody hit the side of my home and fled. 
I had to pay for all the damages because the person who fled just got a ticket and the owner of the car is not answering to their insurance calls. I was laid off and I lost a lot of money from fraud. My devices usually turn back on after all the bad deeds happen. This year, my phone wouldn't turn on. Again, I didn't think much of it. My aunt passed away a couple days later. When my device freaks out, usually is bad news, either be death or financial loss. Sometimes I just laugh through the pain. When I relax, something goes wrong every time. What do you think this could be? Or is it me? And another crazy thing with my phone that happened that I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but about a year back in January, 2023, I was in Vegas and I was in an Airbnb and I was staying with somebody. So there was only one key to the Airbnb and my partner, he said that he was going to go to some meetings. He was going to take longer than me. So I said, I will keep the key to the Airbnb and I am going to drive to my favorite boba place. I had my own rental car. So I went to the boba place and I am on my phone like enjoying my favorite boba in Vegas and all of a sudden my phone turns off okay it happens right you just reboot it it would not reboot on so I'm like I had battery that's kind of weird I tried everything that I can remember physically on how to also like restart your phone but it wasn't nothing was working so I went to the cashier and I asked for a charger I plugged the charger in and it's not charging it's not doing anything it was dead and it happened to be like almost 10 p.m when they were gonna close the shop so I had to leave so I said okay like I have some pretty good memory I can kind of remember like where where the Airbnb was. So I was just trying to freestyle what I remember to go to the Airbnb because I remembered it wasn't that far away. So I get in the car and I'm driving and literally I am in like a dystopia. Like I'm in my dreams because I can see the similar buildings that I remember, but I couldn't find the street or like how to get back to the Airbnb. Literally I was circling around the town for like 30 plus minutes and my phone still wouldn't turn on. So I stopped at Walgreens and I get out and I asked the cashier, can I please use your phone? Because I did remember the Airbnb's a uh, street, but I didn't remember the actual like number of the address. So I used a phone, I found the streets and then memorized it verbally how to get there. And it wasn't that far. I drive to where I saw and the street is there, but it's like a totally different town. So apparently I guess there's like two streets with the same names in, in Vegas. So I was like, what the heck? I've been now driving for an hour and a half, almost two hours. So the last thing that I decided to do is that I saw this Korean restaurant that was open. So I get out and I said, okay, Okay, fellow Koreans, please help me. And I go in and unfortunately the guy says that he also doesn't have a charger, but I could use his phone to try and find the street. Now, eventually he says that, well, the street that you're talking about is just around the corner. So I'm like, Ugh, what if this is the wrong address again? Now I'm going to circle me back. Now I'm losing gas. What's going on? It was the street of where the Airbnb was. And now I can remember which house it is. And I get there and I'm like, woo. And somehow I was able to get my phone turned on inside of the Airbnb. Airbnb. Like that was just a weird experience because that has never happened to my phone before till this day. And now looking back, I feel like that was a little bit of a metaphor of what was happening in 2023 for me. I felt very lost. I felt like there was nobody that can help me. But eventually I did find my way through the darkness and everything is okay. And I'm in such a better position right now. Just a lot of things has happened in my life. And maybe some of you guys are like, ah, it's like your phone just turned off. Like what are the odds that it just happened? happened to turn off not when I was in the Airbnb when I was safe inside but when I was outside I couldn't remember anybody's phone numbers I couldn't remember the Airbnb address it was late at night I just had to like fend for myself and it was like kind of like a metaphor of, of what I might be going through that year but to you Shanti it seems like you're telling us that this is happening like all the time or often at the end of the day you guys I mean bad things will happen regardless you like it or not in life like you said, sometimes you just laugh through the pain and maybe you can learn something from this. Maybe you will not be as trusting of people with your money. So sometimes I do believe that the spirits are trying to teach us a lesson and get us stronger. So you can do this, Shanti. This user says, when I was 15 or 16, I used to sleep during the day and be awake at night. One time when I was awake at night and binging YouTube, I got hungry and went to the kitchen. As I entered the kitchen, I saw my younger brother near the water purifier in his favorite outfit doing his favorite yoga pose. That's odd. He looked shocked to see me and I also got shocked to see him. After a few seconds, I realized that my brother was sleeping in my room and I got scared and ran to my room and there was my younger brother sleeping peacefully in his nightwear. After that, I didn't have the guts to go back. That is so funny. Why would a ghost be doing his favorite yoga pose? That's like 
Yoga pose in the middle of the night in the kitchen. In the paranormal series that I've been doing with you guys, there's so many stories of you guys seeing like your family members, your loved ones, but it's not actually them. Like they're in another room or they're not inside of the house, they're at work, but you see them clearly. And what would happen if we interacted with them, interacted with the fake ghost? Would they just disappear in front of our eyes? Would they just interact with us? Are they trying to like steal our souls? Do you guys have any stories where you guys have actually interacted with them and not ran away? I'm really curious what would happen. Potato says, my mom actually had similar experience with predicting my grandpa's death. But it's not like she saw a skull on his face, but instead she saw his soul in a room and thinking it was my grandpa. But after she got out of the room, my grandpa was actually in another room and she was confused at first and didn't think much of it. And a few days after, my grandpa passed away peacefully. So sorry to hear that. I've heard these stories as well where our souls already know a couple days or weeks before if we're going to pass. And sometimes our future souls are walking around the room. They're already in heaven. Sometimes they pop up in other people's dreams telling them, hey, I am going to pass. I wouldn't say like it's more like predictive set in stone like years later, but a couple days or weeks before, I guess our souls do know. If so, could that be prevented or not? really interesting to think about. Last story, Manda says, Hey Gracie, here's something creepy I wanted to share. It happened when I was really young, but I remember the most important details of it. Basically, my mom, dad, auntie, uncle, and I were going on a trip by car. Car ride was really exhausting and long, but we got to our destination anyways. When it was time to head back home, my mom really didn't want to ride the car anymore because it was exhausting to both me and her. We decided to head home by plane. My mom brought a ticket for me, my auntie, herself. We arrived home very fast. My dad and uncle decided to drive the car back home though. In the middle of the drive, it was getting really late and both of them were exhausted. So they decided to take a nap in the car. They parked it on the side of the road in a really empty highway. They were asleep fast. Suddenly, my uncle woke up to a knock on the window. It was just a knock. And since my uncle was laying down, he couldn't really see who it was. He was tired and tried to sleep again. Suddenly, there were women and children laughs everywhere. My uncle jolted up, but there was completely nothing in the highway, but the laughters kept going. It sounded like a village festival was going on. My uncle quickly got into the driver's seat and started driving very fast. My father woke up and asked him why he was panicking. Only when they reached a nearby city, my uncle explained to him with tearful eyes. Till this day, no one believed him except for me. I don't think a perfectly healthy adult male would make up a story and tell it with tears. He's still traumatized till this day. That would definitely freak me out if there was nobody near and I heard knocks and children and women laughing. I mean, technically, is this like the time loop story where they're seeing like the time loop of the past? But if so, how are they able to knock on the car if it's technically not happening in the past? Or is this more like a ghost story, literally village of ghosts, and they're able to interact with the physical world? But honestly, if this happened to me, maybe I'll pull out my phone and try to record it and see if the laughters would technically translate to the phone technology. If it doesn't, and you could only hear it in your ears, I mean, that's also crazy as well. I told you guys in my past that up till middle school, I would hear certain voices when I would be awake, but technically very tired. When I was like sleeping and I woke up from a nap, I would hear voices of like gigglings. And I remember I would rub my ears like this all the time in middle school. I'm like, oh, I'm just hallucinating. So I don't know, man, was what I was hearing till middle school, like the other side, the other side of the veil that I can't see. If you guys have any crazy stories, remember to share them in the comments down below and let me know what you guys have thought about all these stories. Sending you guys good love and energy. See you guys in my next video.